Welcome to the New South Wales Government Business Connect webcast on business dis disruption. My name is Lisa Harpley and I'm a Business Connect advisor at the Business Centre. Business Connect is a dedicated program funded by the New South Wales Government and delivered through a network of independent service providers to help you start or grow your small business. Today's webcast titled The Mysterious SEO is all about understanding what search engine optimization or SEO what it is and what practical steps you can take to improve your organic search. Although uncertainty is a constant in business, it is particularly pronounced for business right now. So our guest Brogan is going to walk us through what SEO is, why SEO is important for your business and some practical actions you can be doing to optimise your SEO. Strategies we can put in place to get through uh, this time or be in the best position for when this crisis is over. We will have live questions being monitored during the web webcast today. Director and founder at Firewire Digital, Brogan has over a decade of experience in e-commerce, SEO and Google Ads. Leading his team and clients to success on every project, Brogan is obsessed with achieving solid return on investment through digital marketing and creating long-lasting client relationships. Uh, welcome, Brogan, and uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, could you just uh, tell us a bit more about yourself? I uh, started Firewire Digital probably about four, four and a half years ago now, um, after moving to Newcastle. I was originally from the Blue Mountains, Lovely. west of Sydney. Uh, wife's from Newcastle, couldn't afford a house in Sydney anywhere, so <laughs> <laughs> we moved up to, up to Newcastle. Um, got a little boy who turns one tomorrow. Oh, exciting. So we've survived the first year, which has been <laughs> yeah. amazing. So you haven't slept. No, that is <laughs> yeah. correct. No, that is correct. Um, but we're getting there, so that's good. Fantastic. Um, Brogan, what SEO challenges have you found businesses have really struggled with since COVID-19? I, th I think the big thing about what happened when COVID initially hit back in March was, a lot of businesses needed to transition to be online. You know, it was their only means of continuing to trade. Yeah. And with, in regards to SEO, you know, that became even more important to, to be able to rank high. But when businesses didn't have an existing presence to optimise and they're starting from scratch, there's no way to do SEO quickly. So that became quite difficult for, for some businesses to to be to be found during those early parts of COVID. Yeah. Yeah. It's certainly been an interesting time for digital marketing in the last 12 months and I think a lot of businesses now are taking their digital strategies far more seriously oh, than ever before. So the mysterious SEO, Brogan, are you able to, a lot of people find this really daunting and not really sure what it is. How do you best describe it? The, to me, the short answer is making Google love your website. Um, the, you know, there's thousands of things we can do to optimize a site, but that, I mean, that has to be the short answer. You know, the, the goal is to rank high in Google. Yeah. Um, the longer answer to what is SEO, it's you've got four key pillars. First one being technical SEO, um, you know, can search engines find your website? Can they crawl it? You know, are, are your, your pages able to be indexed? Yeah. You know, because that's the first pillar. Next one will be definitely content. Um, is your content the best it can be? Is it going, is it providing the best answer to what your user is wanting to find? Because yeah. if it's not, you're, you're never going to rank. Uh, next pillar would be on-page SEO, um, which kind of does feed into content. content, but is a few more elements to it. Yeah. Um, you know, then, so that's talking about like page titles, headings, image, images, etc. Then the next will be off-page. Uh, does uh, off-page SEO, does the rest of the world, the rest of the internet, see you as an authority on the topic? Are they linking to your site? So they're, they're the main four pillars. And within that, there's many, many different elements, yeah. but that's the overall. 
the main parts. The main parts to it. Great. Brogan, would you be able to sort of just explain a bit more what website crawlers are? They sound like spiders. <laughs> so essentially, people do call them spiders because yeah. they are, it is a, called a web for a reason. You know, it's the World Wide Web. Um, a spider or a website crawler, web, web crawler, is essentially a bot from Google or other search engines that crawls all over the internet, yep. um, finding and recording all of the internet, all the, the valuable bits of the internet. Yep. There is many parts it won't ever go to just because it, the website doesn't have the authority or it's not linked from anywhere. Yeah. And that's where links become more important. But essentially that's what a, a spider or a website crawler is. It's a Google bot or a search engine bot that will go all over your website Fantastic. and re record all of its information. In a creepy spidery kind of way. <laughs> yeah, and it, it will get into, um, just like spiders do, all the nooks and crannies yeah. of your website. And that's what helps you get found. <laughs> Uh, so links to your website, so a great place to start um, is by having a Google My Business and mm -hmm. linking your website with your socials. Yep. Do you have any other suggestions here that people could do? I think they're definitely the first couple of steps to create um, links to your site. The next step would be uh, high quality local directories. So think like true local, local search, yellow pages. Yeah. You know, um, years ago in SEO, it used to be that a link from anywhere was a good link. It's no longer the case anymore. You don't want spammy, crappy links. You know, you need to make an assessment when you're submitting to these directories, um, whether they're a, a trusted site, yeah. you know, so you don't need thousands, you just go the good quality, the ones. good high quality ones. Yeah. Uh, be warned, you will probably be spammed from them. So generally recommend clients uh, create a secondary email, such as like a listings at yeah. company.com.au. So they're not getting it spammed. Right. Little trick there. And a lot of those listings are free. So Va the vast majority are free. Um, if you're in the trades, things like high pages can still, that is a paid listing, but it can still be valuable. Absolutely. So I guess you could al almost say that, you know, SEO is, is Google's customer journey response in a way. Um, they want to ensure that their customers or their searchers in this case have a good experience with Google and making sure that the search results are relevant and that the websites that they're recommending are of good quality. Yeah, 100%. So, yeah. 100%. And that's what has made Google the most popular search engine. They provide the best answers versus other search engines. Absolutely. You know, the, when uh, the recent tiff with the Google and the federal government was happening, lots of people were trying and just said, well, I'll just use Microsoft Bing instead. Uh, and you only had to compare the same search result in Bing versus Google to see the quality results were returned in Google rather than Bing. Yeah. Oh, well, it's a reason why it's a verb, right? And people just say, Correct. just Google it. Just Google it. Because it's a great experience yeah. and people get the results that they want. Yes. Fantastic. Um, so why is SEO important for businesses? I think SEO, for me, it has provided, and, and you know, the research backs it up, is that it provides the best long-term return on investment. You know, to, a lot of businesses are so caught up in getting sales now, getting leads now, today, which, you know, I, un I completely understand, but if you need it today, you're gonna have to pay for it today. Yeah. You know, that means Google ads, Facebook ads, you know, and you're gonna have to pay for that. SEO, unlike Google Ads, it compounds over time. You're going to increase your traffic, increase your leads, increase your sales organically. And that, you know, there's no cap on the return to that. Yeah. But there, you know, often I will talk to clients that say, I want to go Google Ads and I'll go, that's fine, but you're tying yourself into having to pay for those leads forevermore. Yeah. You know, if you invest in SEO, there comes a time when the investment you make in SEO, you know, the return you get on that far outweighs anything you're going to pay for. In the long term. In the long term. Yeah. 
Fantastic. What are some of your top SEO tips that businesses could be doing right now to improve their SEO? I think it's it's a hard one, but first off, the I get a lot of clients coming to me and they don't have the basics in place. You need to get the basics in place first. Bef you know, as soon as you have a website, you need to do these couple of things. You know, number one, make sure you set up Google Analytics yeah. so you can track wh who's coming to your website, where are they coming from, what are they doing on your website. You know, that's all important information. Yeah. You know, so it's that's not just organic traffic, but that's any traffic. Are they coming from Facebook? If you're running Google Ads, are they coming from Google Ads? You know, and how successful all those channels are for converting traffic because what you want to be able to see is the best channel for your business you know uh, it, it might be organic but it also might you, you might be wonderful at TikTok, yeah. pinterest facebook you might have tapped into some communities there yeah. but you want to be able to see that to know that right the next tool i would say particularly in regards to seo is google search console it's another free tool um, it shows you where you're ranking for whatever terms your website rank is ranking for, um, what countries you're ranking for it in, yeah. what pages are ranking, and, and that just gives you so much valuable information for free. Yeah. You know, and, and then you can start to optimize things from there. You go, okay, well, you know, I can see my homepage is ranking in position eight. You know, we're not getting much traffic, but what do I need to do? You know, can I do some things to get that up? Yeah. You know, why you, you go to the search results and look at who's beating you? Yeah. And assess why they're better. Yeah. You know, um, I think the next key point that for particularly businesses starting out is, you know, even established businesses, is what are your customers searching? Have they, is your website set up for what they're searching? So what I mean by that is, are you using technical jargon that only industry understands yeah. and is never ever searched unless you're targeting industry people? But, you know, in general, are your customers searching that? Ask yeah. them. So, you know, really focusing on the search terms your customer uses. Yes. Right, and that's something that I see a lot of, right? People are using a technical industry jargon yes. within their website, which looks professional and you think you're doing the right thing, yeah. but that's not how people, that's not the terms people are using. That's not people the terms that people use. And you need to write your site for the user, not for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the next thing for me is the content, I mean, I, you know, it's been around forever. People just say, write content, write content, write content. You know, uh, content for content's sake is never a good thing, ever. You know, um, you know writing 500 word blog posts every day or every week. No, don't do it. You know, you, I would always advocate for quality over quantity. Yeah. You know, so I would rather you write one, 2,000, all in, 2,000 word, 8,000 word, all encompassing piece of quality content. If that's what's ranking for that term, you need to check that before you do it. Um, but I'd rather you do that than just write content for content's sake, because you, you, you're essentially, you're wasting your time. Yeah. And you can be better spent elsewhere. You Absolutely. know, business owners have limited time, you know, invest it where it's going to provide the best return on investment for your time. And should businesses be focusing their blog content on their, their core keywords? A hundred percent, you know. Um, you know, when you're launching a site or, or when you're going to review your site, you need to think about what your core terms are. Do some, of the, do some basic keyword research um, and just make a big long list of the search volumes, um, you know, what people are searching to find your business, what your users are talking to you about, what yeah. questions they're asking you, answer those questions. Don't, you know, if you're a plumber, don't write a recipe blog, recipe post. You, it's yeah. not relevant. No. You know? Really focusing on those frequently asked questions. Really focus on the questions customers ask you. Um, yeah, d it, keep it to your w w vertical, keep it to your industry. Yeah. And, and you, 
will see benefit from that. Yeah, fantastic. And what about speed? Website speed, another, <laughs> another huge area of, um, that I often see sites falling down at. You know, website speed is a ranking factor for Google. Yep. And it's uh, in an update we've just had the last week um, and another update kept rolling out next month that Google's already announced is focused on a speed element. It's a thing called Core Web Vitals, but part of that is how fast a website yeah. loads. Businesses or websites that have slow loading pages lose customers. Uh, yeah. You know, you can, often what happens is people upload an image off their phone, upload an, a download image off the internet from somewhere, yeah. um, and it's a huge file, you know, it, it's photo quality, it's 10 megabyte, it's, it's, it's bad. Yes. You know, there's heaps of things you can do to resize them, compress them, but you know, there's no need whatsoever to have a 10 megabyte image. Um, you know, generally you want a website to load in under like three seconds, you know, and preferably be under probably two megabyte for the whole website. And yeah. one image is taking that up, particularly like when you think about often websites will have a big hero image, yeah. you know, the team photo or something like that or exactly. product photo. Um, you know, e-commerce websites in particular fail at, or, or fall down at this because they've got lots of so product many. shots. Yeah. Um, and if they haven't been compressed, you're just asking for asking for problems. <laughs> I know when I get to a website and it's slow, I'm I'm out of there. I yeah. think people are programmed to be pretty impatient online, so you've really got to make sure that speeds. Yeah, quick. yeah, hundred yeah, percent. And there's, you know, <laughs> even like go, you know, there's tools like you know, load it up into Paint on Google on your desktop, right? Yeah. And just there's a little button there where you can just go resize. Resize it down. You don't need it to be more than 1,800 pixels. Yeah. You don't need it to be 4,000 pixels. No, no monitor, no one's using a monitor that big. No. Particularly nowadays when we're meant to be, opt when websites should technically be built for mobile first yeah. rather than desktop. Yeah, it's where we're all on our phones Everyone's more. sitting on their phones. Yeah. Uh, should images be named a certain way and how important are image tags at the moment? So it does help to name images. Um, I, I'm not going to say it's going to make it, um, a huge difference to your site, but it, when you're saving a file, just rename it to what it is. Yeah. You know, it's a pink dog, like playing basketball, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I'd like to see that. Yeah, but like just rename it to be a descriptor of, a what, descriptor the image of what the image is. Yeah. And Google will crawl that and pick up that name. And it just adds that value to that page. Fantastic. And can you share some helpful tools that people could be using um, themselves? Um, you know, how do they know what their effective keywords are for their business? What helps them? Well, first off, we've already mentioned Google Search Console. 100% yep. use that. You will find what your website is showing up for. Now, that may not be getting any clicks. It may be your website showing up on page five for that term, yeah. but at least you're going to start to see what your website's already ranking for. A and that will also give you, um, it gives you the impressions of that search. So if you can set the time parameter, the date parameters, it will tell you that, you know, this month there's been 5,000 searches for this term. Yeah. You've got no clicks from it because you're on page five, but yeah. it, it does give you a bit of indication that there's interest there. What volume is there for that term? Yeah. Um, you know, if you're coming to planning words that you're not ranking for, um, Google Ads has a Google, what's called a Google Ads Keyword Planner, yep. which has quite low volume search terms. So, you know, particularly when you're looking at um, like local businesses, when you're you're trying to put like um, plumber and then the location, yeah. like Plumber Newcastle, Very simple Plumber terms. Maitland, yeah. right? So they have quite small search volume or, or, you know, let's say a block drain plumber, like that's even a small, it's going to come up, maybe be searched 10, 20 times a month. Yeah. But at least you then know that that's how much it comes up. 
right? And, and it does give you those search volumes for those low volume keywords. Yeah. And you can build a strategy around that. I'm building that up. What about long tail keywords? Yeah, so I think that's where people can find value in. So often people just go, well, I want to target the high level word. I want to target the competitive word because it's got the most volume. But the reality is, is that, you know, those terms have already been targeted, yeah. right, by higher authority websites, higher authority businesses. And if you're a new website that hasn't invested time in SEO, hasn't invested time in content, or, you know, you're you're going to struggle to compete on those competitive terms. But that's where the long tail keywords or longer searches can provide value. You know, go into, or again, come back, listen to your customers. What are they asking you? If it's a question, it's a long tail word. Yeah. You know, how to blah, blah, blah. What is blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, that, answer those questions and they will have lower competition just by the lower search volume. Absolutely. And you can, even as a new website, you can win those search results because maybe no one else is answering those questions. Absolutely. And you most likely will have blog content on it, right? And you'll have blog content <laughs> on it, correct. <laughs> Fantastic. And what strategy would you recommend for a business who keywords are already ranking pretty highly? I feel like that that's where you need to go into your search console you need to assess what is ranking mm. where it's ranking you know because they if if businesses are already ranking for competitive terms often you can get quite quick wins you know um so i'm thinking that's where you go uh you, you filter search console and you go uh, what what pages are in positions or what search results are in positions four to 10? Yeah. So you're on page one, but you're not in the top three. So you're yeah. probably not getting that much traffic. And that's where you go, all right, what can we do to yeah. get those up? Um, and you can get quick wins. You can get quite quick wins there with a lot of volume of traffic if you're already competing at that higher level. Yeah. And are there any sort of Chrome extensions or things like that people could be using? Yeah, look, um, one of the good ones that it's only recently come out maybe 12 months ago, it's called Keyword Surfer. Yeah. Um, there's a whole bunch of good key, has a whole bunch of really good uh, Chrome extensions, but that's probably really, that's um, one of the better ones that I yeah. just have on my desktop all the time. Yeah. You know, and it tells you an approximate search volume for any keyword right in your search results. Yeah which is I handy. Use that one. Right? I use keywords anywhere as well. Oh yeah, that's, a, that's another one that's pretty similar. a lot of really good suggestions come up on every Google search down the right hand side. Yeah, so it also tells you like search terms, yeah. like and what other search terms are related to that search term. Exactly. You know, and the volume of that. So that's a, it's a really good little tool to, yeah. you know, if you typed in what you wanted to rank for. Yeah. You know, even directly in search, it shows you. Um, and then it tells you some of the related topics. And, you know, I also feel like the search results themselves are an underused tool for Google. Mm. Um, you know, when you type in a question to Google or type in a, a search term, you go right to the bottom. There is other related searches, right? Yeah. They're often questions. They're often other topics that are related. There's yes. more content for you. Absolutely. Uh, what, what tools would you recommend for competitor analysis? The first one would be Google search results. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing what their website's like, right? Yep. Um, but one of the other really good ones that's um, got a free version currently is called semrush.com. Yep. Um, I think I think from memory, I've got the paid version now, but I think from memory, you might be able to do 10 to 15 different searches within that each day. Yep. So it's quite a lot for a it small is. business, right? Yep. You probably don't need to do that much. But you essentially can just type in your 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 domain or a competitor's domain, and it will give you high level stats or high level information on on your competitor's website. So think um, you can look at the, how high your website's authority is versus yep. how, web, how high your competitors. competitors are. And that gives you a qu quite a quick indication that if, now these aren't, 
to a, put a asterisk on this. This <laughs> is not any kind of metric that's used by Google to rank. Yeah. This is just a metric made up by these type of tools. But it still does give you indication, yeah. right? That if a competitor has um, an authority score of say 30 and you've only got five, right? That's There's so some work to be done. You've here. got some work to do, <laughs> okay? Um, but it, but these tools so like SCM Rush also gives you, you know, how many words they rank for, um, an approximate how much traffic they get. You know, so if you're also if you're thinking of starting a business, these tools are great because mm -hmm. you can look at your competitors that, of whatever industry you're thinking of going into and go, yeah. well, yes, there's opportunity there, right? You know, is that hard opportunity or is that an easy opportunity? <laughs> but it gives you an indication of, of search volume, of competition, definitely. Fantastic. Um, how often should businesses be reviewing their SEO? <sighs> I think you need to start with, you actually need a plan. Yeah. You, you can't just go, I'm just going to review it. You need a plan. Um, generally, we try and work on a 12 month plan and I would recommend businesses have at least a 12 month plan and that they would try and review it every three months, Yeah. every six months. I mean, even... Checking those analytics. Check it, you know, yeah. they're, they're, there's, you can get analytic, you can get Google Analytics and Google Search Console um, to send you reports yeah. automated every month to tell you, you know, how your traffic's trending, um, up, down, is it, you know, up on last month, where have they come from, what are they doing? Yeah. It's just, it's really important to just, you don't have to actively engage every month if you've got your plan in place right yeah. if you're following your plan of content of optimizations that's that's well and good but you just need to make sure that nothing major has happened to your site to yeah. make it disappear from google for example it's ticking along nicely yeah that's correct right <laughs> like you just want it to tick over yeah fantastic at what stage should a business engage for paid seo i think you can you can outsource your seo at any stage of your business um the the point the catch on that was you need to have realistic expectations yeah. of how successful that will be and how quickly that will be successful seo is you know and i cannot stress this enough it is a long-term investment yeah. it's a long-term play for market share um if you're a new business it will take it just will take longer to get results than an already established business you know, like we've touched on before, if you're already, if you're a well-established business and you're already competing, you can get more of those quick wins. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's no, there's no real rule of when you can bring us, bring or outsource SEO. It come, I mean, budget and skill set would come into it as well, right? Yeah, 100%. Have you got the time? Have you got the budget? Yeah, where, where is your time more valuable? Where is your time better spent? <laughs> is, it better, is it better off spent learning SEO? Yeah. Um, do you have the time to invest in it? Of course, that's right. But it's, it, it really does come back to, and it's something I try to stress to, um, you know, prospective clients, is it's a long-term play. You can't... Yes expect to do it for two weeks and, and, see and things and see results yeah. you know often we will do work for three months six months and it's not until um, a Google core algorithm update that we yeah. see um, those that hard work for six months Paying really off. pay off yeah so it, it's it's not a quick win I often refer to the old Pantene ad from the 90s of Rachel Hunter. It won't happen overnight, but it will happen. Yeah. I probably say that on a daily basis. But it, it, is, it is really about setting those expectations. And I think if people realise and understand that this is a long-term strategy, that you know, they're patient enough to, to play out the game because it will pay off. Oh, 100%. It will pay off if you're implementing the correct strategies. Fantastic. Well, um, I think... I wonder if we have any questions come through from YouTube. I don't know that we do. That's all right. Um, that's okay. Um, if we do, we will um, reply to those offline. 
Um, it's, I guess, time to wrap it up. Thank you so much for joining us, no, Thank Brogan, you, absolutely. Thank you for having me. And sharing your, your insights and providing some of those really practical tips. I'm sure people got a lot out of that. Well, hopefully. Um, and um, yeah, hopefully they're able to adapt that into their own websites and into their strategies and um, go from there. If anyone would like to uh, make contact with Brogan or his team, please get in contact with us and, and we will pass on your details um, to, to Brogan and his team there. Uh, we would also um, like to again recommend the Business Connect program, which is a dedicated program uh, funded by the New South Wales government and delivered through a network of independent service providers to help you start or grow your small business. If you want a business advisory session subsidised by the New South Wales Government under the Business Connect program, call 1300 134 359 or email connect at treasury.newsouthwales.gov.au. And that leads me to once again thank our amazing team from Fortronic who provide webcast expertise and te technology behind the webcast today and have been our AV partners uh, over a whole range of products. We strongly endorse them. If you would like to talk with them about implementing webcasting as part of your business, uh, please reach out to us and we'll pass on the details. Mm -hmm.